Yeah, I tested this one and it's, oh, it's rock solid. Tested this one. Oh yeah, good. And I haven't really tested this one yet, but I don't really have time to. Hi, my name is David. My job is to create projects that help kids grow as innovators. And today I'm here with your project challenge, DIY furniture. Your goal is to create a piece of furniture that is both sturdy and stylish. Also to be courageous by choosing to test your furniture, even though that might mean breaking it. The materials you'll need are some cardboard boxes, paper, a ruler, a cutting tool like a steak knife, a pencil, scissors, a Sharpie, tape, a tube, and some type of glue like a hot glue gun. We'll look at building two types of furniture, seats and small tables with cabinets. A cardboard box on its own is not really strong enough to be a sturdy piece of furniture, and it's not particularly stylish. So first we'll look at how to make cardboard boxes stronger. The primary technique we'll be using to make our boxes stronger is adding paper tubes to the inside. There are two key techniques to making the paper tubes. The first is making the paper the exact same height as the interior height of the box. So to find the interior height of your box, use a ruler and measure from the floor up to the edge. So for this particular box, six inches is the height from the floor up to the upper edge of the box. That means I want paper tubes that are six inches tall. To make six inch wide strips of paper for my tubes, I'll mark six inches on either side of this piece of paper and then draw a line across. Now that I know where I'll be cutting, I can stack some paper underneath so I can cut multiple pieces of paper at once. The second key to making the paper tubes is rolling them straight and even. So find something tube-like to roll the paper around, like a paper towel roll. Even with the paper towel roll, it's easy for the paper not to be straight. To straighten it out, just knock the paper and towel roll against the table and the tube will kind of straighten itself out. Then you can seal it with a piece of tape. Okay, now that we know how to make tubes for whatever size box you may have found in the recycling, let's take a look at how to make a seat. And first things first, find a box that you think is the right height to sit on. You'd be surprised how short a box can be actually pretty comfortable to sit on. Uh, I found this box and I think it's gonna make a great seat. We'll need one side of the box sealed shut, so use tape and or glue to seal one side of the box. Now it's time to make all my tubes. I actually found this to be one of the more challenging parts of the project. The boxes require a lot of tubes, so it takes some patience to make all of the tubes and make them well. Tubes still don't nearly fill the box, but that's okay because the tubes are really strong and we don't need to fill the entire box. What we do need is the ability to position the tubes inside the box. So we're going to make spacer tubes. These are just large tubes that allow us to push the other tubes around. They're easier to make than the small supporting tubes because you can just fold a piece of paper in half, put a piece of tape over it, and then stick it into the box. The number of spacer tubes you need is enough to fill the box so that all the tubes don't jostle around and fall over. But the tubes can't just be anywhere in the box. They need to be in the center where they can be most supportive. So move the spacers and tubes around so that you can centralize the tubes in the box. You might be wondering, how do I know if I have enough tubes? And the answer is, you don't know. There are a lot of variables. It depends on the size of your box, the type of paper you've used. So what you're going to have to do is test. And at this point in the project, testing is kind of scary. We invested a lot of time making paper tubes and we don't really want to destroy our seats. But if it's gonna break, it's better to break it sooner than later. So let's be courageous and test it now and test it thoroughly so it doesn't break after we've invested more time in our project. First, just press on it with your hands. If you feel like the paper is giving way, then open it up and add more tubes. But if it's feeling strong, after you push on it, the next step is to carefully sit on your seat. Again, if you feel it start to give way, let off and then go back and add more tubes. But if it's holding you, you can try lifting your feet off the ground and see if it holds your entire body weight. Great, it's working. Now let's set the seat aside and check out the small table with cabinet. First step in making a cabinet is finding a box and sealing one side, which I've done here. Connect two pieces of paper together and then put them inside the box to make an arch. The inside of the arch will be the open space in our cabinet. Then use the same tube making process you use with the chair and add tubes around the outside of the arch. Keep adding tubes until the outside of the arch is pretty packed with tubes. To keep the arch from shifting its position, add a piece of tape at the corner of the box where the arch meets the corner. Do this on both sides. 
Okay, and now we're ready to test the cabinet. The cabinet does not need to be as strong as a seat, but it does still need to hold a fair amount of weight to make it sturdy. So start stacking books on top. And again, we really want this to break now, not later. So be generous with the amount of books you stack on top of your cabinet. Okay, I think my cabinet is strong enough after that test. But before I close up the top of my cabinet, I'm going to mark the open side of the arch with a piece of tape. Next step is to cut the cabinet door. So find something to trace. I found this book and put it over the tape where you marked the open side of the arch. Trace around the book with a pencil. Before we cut out the door, we want to add a knob because it's easier to add it before we cut out the door. I found this random cork, but you can literally use any object and glue it onto one of the sides of the door. To cut out the door, the first thing you have to do is punch a starter hole with a pencil. So find a corner and punch a hole. Ask an adult for help on this step. If you want to try cutting it yourself, ask the adult. A steak knife works great for cutting cardboard. Make sure to put a glove on your non-cutting hand. Work the knife into the starter hole by rocking it back and forth. Then once the knife is in, you can use a sawing motion to cut the cardboard. Cut the three sides of the cabinet door, but make sure not to cut the side opposite to the knob. This is going to be the hinge of your door. Get the hinge working by just opening and closing your door a few times. So that concludes the building of our furniture, and now it's time to add our own style to the furniture. There's a lot of ways to give the furniture your own look, and adding tape is one of those ways. The first thing we're gonna do is edge the boxes with tape. To make the edging process easier, only add tape to one edge at a time, and then repeat for the entire box. So I edged my first cabinet, then I made a second cabinet and edged that one, and I also edged my seat with a purple tape. I like the look of the edging on my cabinets, but I wanted a little more flair, so I chose to use a blue tape on the inside edge of the cabinet door just to highlight that shape. You can also use Sharpies and tape to add bold geometric patterns to blank sides of your stool or cabinet. With my cabinets and seat now done, I could think about different ways to arrange them, either connected or not connected. Ultimately, I decided that it'd be most useful to have the seat separate and the cabinet stacked on top of each other. Likely the cabinet will be a bit wobbly, but you can mitigate that by adding four feet to the bottom cabinet. I used four corks as the feet for my cabinet, but you basically just need four small objects that are the same size. Old jar lids can be a good option for this. I then glued the two cabinets together and used weight on top to help with adhesion of the two cabinets. Making your own furniture is a lot of work, but hopefully now you have something to sit on so you can take a rest. That's it for this challenge. If you made any DIY furniture, we would love to see a photo or video of you using it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. I haven't really tested this one yet, but I don't really have time to. Alright, yeah, it's not sturdy. <laughs>